we spend half our lives sleeping, it is really not a waste, because we humans need rest so as to restore our bodies. However, as we sleep, we experience something mysterious. We see, hear, and feel something as we sleep. We recognize something that is created from experience, memories, and preference. We are transported into another reality, which we only recognize upon waking up. Remember that the head vision that you are having fun sometime with your crush, and the pain and longing that you feel as the alarm rang. Or remember that unfortunate vision that you failed your exam and you woke up frantically to study. Or perhaps that vision you cannot understand, but it left you weary for a whole day. Oh, how you wish you could go back to your dream or leave it immediately. But it is hard. Maybe we could just talk about how we could understand what, when, and why we dream. Join us in at least an attempt in unlocking the mystery of dreams. But first, let us differentiate a dream from what is not a dream. Daydreaming is when we momentarily detach from reality because we are consciously imagining something else but we are awake. Dreaming is when we detach from reality but we are, of course, asleep. So daydreaming is more associated to psychosis rather than dreaming. Psychosis, according to Adam Medical Encyclopedia, is also the loss of contact from reality but it is often triggered by substances, injuries, or disorders. Psychosis has two types. The first is hallucination, wherein one experiences hearing or seeing something that does not exist. And the second is delusion, wherein one has a false belief of something that is taking place. The trick is that when one dreams, upon waking up, one can differentiate what is real from what isn't. So why do we dream? Let us go back to that dream of your crush. Famed psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud would say that your dream happened because of your desire for someone else. But not all vision may be clear, for there are four elements of a dream. First is condensation, which compresses information in a single thought. Displacement confuses the important and sig insignificant parts of a dream. Symbolization includes symbols that reflect the latent meaning of a dream. And finally, secondary revision makes bizarre elements comprehensible, therefore reflecting the content of a dream. A famous example is that when one dreams riding a train inside a tunnel, Freud would say that it reflects desire for intercourse, all the more when you dream about your crush. Meanwhile, Carl Jung would also agree with Freud but the unconscious thoughts are reflected in symbols that perhaps the only the dreamer could understand. Jung believes that dreams are personal and interpreting, interpreting dreams can reveal a lot about the dreamer. So if you have a dream a lot about your crush, perhaps you need to stop dreaming and start acting. Finally, Calvin would rather disagree with Freud and Jung. It is not enough to know what you are dreaming about. You also need to know what you are doing in that dream and how you interact with the dream with what you experience. Yes, you may dream about your crush, but it makes a lot of difference if you're just sitting around than if you're actually having a date in your dream. Sadly, it's just a dream. You still need to act on it. So let's proceed to when dreams occur. So, you may have attempted to go back to sleep and resume your happy dreaming, but you can't just easily do that. Many assume that sleeping is a simply an on and off switch. There are five stages in a dream. The, the first stage is light sleep, followed by gradual reduction of bodily and mental activity, until the third and fourth stages wherein there is deep sleep. The final stage, occurring 90 to 110 minutes into undisturbed sleep, is characterized by the rapid eye movement sleep. In this stage, the body is paralyzed, but there is continual eye jerking in different directions and increase in heart rate and blood pressure. William Demont and Nathaniel Quitman in 1957 discovered that dreams are reported during REM sleep. So much for your attempt to dream again. 
it appears you have to wait for more than an hour. Just get up and don't be trapped into feelings that are so attached. Nearly half a century later, however, many scientists sought to disprove that dreams only occur during REM sleep. But despite these efforts, they can only theorize. Here are some theories that try to explain how and why dreams occur. John Allen Hobson and Robert McCartley made the activation synthesis model in 1970s. It says that the brain is activated during REM sleep and the limbic system including amygdala and hippocampus which are responsible for emotions, sensations and memories is activated too. The brain makes this comprehensible through dreams. Decades later in 2003, Eugene Taro theorized long-term memory excitation. This activity occurs during sleep as this executive function of the brain is only allowed during sleep and so dreams are the space of the memory excitations but it does not mean that dreams would be always clear. Finally, in 2004, Ji Zhang proposed the continual activation theory, which proposes that short-term memories are processed into long ones during sleep, that which requires continued activation of the brain. Hence, a dream is a way for the brain to be continually active. But there's an even greater mystery. Do dreams have the power to predict? Many believe that dreams are premonitions. However, According to James Ralph Jewell, and as what we have learned from the previous theories, many premonitions are already expected by the dreamer even before sleeping. Many dreams also occur by chance. Premonitions can go as far as finding a misplaced notebook in an exact time and location in a dreamer consciously does not know. It is totally different from predicting that you would fail an exam, which may actually happen if you really did not study and all you did was sleep. Premonitions are also different from fulfilling the subject desires to the dreamer. Sounds like Freud, right? Often so-called predictions are just a result of what you think out loud. Although there is still room for interpretation, definitely what we dream does not just come from anywhere. In fact, it can also come from memories buried deep within your consciousness. There are dreams that bring us back to our childhood or a long time ago, wherein one can vividly remember the details of the furniture inside. Well, we can only go far in understanding something that takes place when we don't consciously know what it takes place or whatever in the end. We revealed some parts of the mystery of dreams in a comprehensible, though not entirely scientific manner. Dreams are still a mystery, but we do know scientifically that it occurs. When we, but when we grab some shut eye, when we sleep, certain mental activity is translated into sensory experience. We also learn that dreams depend on a person's experience, memory, consciousness, and desires rather than be entirely random. Hence, premonitions that happen in reality may just be chance or by the dreamer's consciousness desires. So dream on!